So let's talk about the win-win of walkable cities. This is part of my work on radical alignment. Now, I didn't invent walkable cities. It's nothing new. It's already big in Europe, and there's plenty of communities on Reddit and other places, you know, like um, F cars uh, and those sorts of things. But the idea of walkable cities, if this is new for you, is basically just creating city paradigms, so tweaking zoning laws to prioritize pedestrians. So if you've ever been to a big European city uh, like uh, Barcelona or Madrid or Paris, a lot of them are already organized in this way just because having a car is too expensive and, well, the cities were established long before cars existed. So this, there's some old paradigms and there's some new paradigms. So one idea of walkable cities is that you should have repeating uh, squares or city blocks. And basically you should be able to live, work, play, eat, socialize all within one city block. So you have basically one small town repeating indefinitely across a city. This reduces traffic. Um, it is more sustainable economically. It's easier on the infrastructure. There's lots and lots of benefits to this, unlike American cities, which are all organized around the car. So if you reprioritize your zoning laws and your urban planning around pedestrians rather than cars, that creates a whole bunch of different design affordances. Um, but even more so, not only is it better economically, it is better for people. You have more green spaces, you have more socialization, you have less isolation, you have less pollution, you have more exercise. And so that's why I call it a win-win. The win-win of walkable cities is a very clear kind of no-brainer. And again, it's catching on. Um, so it's not like I'm not trying to say like, hey, here's a brand new thing. Like there's plenty of books on it. There's plenty of videos on it. There's plenty of communities. But my point is, and the reason that this is on my Pragmatic Progressive channel, is because this is, one, it's highly established, it's very pragmatic. There's books, there's guides, um, there's examples out there of walkable cities. And just because it's walkable doesn't mean that it's car free. And I know some of you out there are like, well, that sounds too communist or that sounds too socialist. I'm not, I'm not saying throw the baby out with the bathwater. All I'm saying is that there are established principles that just update the zoning laws basically of, and the, and the city ordinances and urban planning paradigms. And you say, Hey, let's prioritize pedestrians instead. And then from that one simple change, rather than prioritizing cars, you prioritize pedestrians changes the entire layout of cities. It also changes the entire character of cities. So why is this pragmatic? Why is this progressive? Well, it's pragmatic because there's a lot of hard and fast rules to follow and it is beneficial for everyone. It's better for the economy. It's better for the people. Um, it's progressive because it is a change. Um, and so some of the old fuddy duddies out there, some of the Republicans and conservatives might be like, well, we should keep things the way that are, that they are because it's working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But to that, I would say, is it really working? I would say that American cities in particular are super broken because you need a car to get around, uh, which then creates a lot of needs um, around cars, such as congestion. It also then means that you prioritize things like suburbs, which are intrinsically isolating. There's so many downstream effects from the assumption of cars. Now, again, that's not saying that you get rid of cars because also there's a lot of people out there, particularly here in America, that get super offended if you even suggest maybe you don't need a car because the car is a symbol of American freedom. So you're not gonna get rid of it, but at the same time, you need it. So the assumption was that everyone is gonna have a car, everyone needs a car, but why? You don't, there's nothing intrinsic about life that says you need a car. You do want to have physical freedom. You wanna be able to get around, get to where you need to at any given time and have control over it. Sometimes I do a thought experiment. Imagine a hundred years ago, where if you wanted to get anywhere, you walked, you biked, you got on a train, you got on a boat. hundred years ago, well, I guess there was the Model T. Cars were a thing a hundred years ago. Two hundred years ago, you had a horse and carriage, if you were lucky and rich. Otherwise, you walked. And so, yes, it is so convenient that I can go buy a van and live in a van, and it's basically a modern spaceship. Um, but at the same time, is the expense worth it? The downstream effects of what that does to your health, what that does to your life, 
and the way that it forces you to design your habitat and your cities. Again, you can still have uh, mass transit and room for automobiles in walkable cities, so it's not really a gigantic change. I guess that's about it. I really just wanted to make this video to point out that uh, walkable cities are a great example of a win-win of urban design that is both economically better and better for the well-being of people. So therefore, it's a solution that sells itself. It's not heavy-handed. It's not the communist coming to change everything. It is. It fits nice and neat within the capitalist framework, within the neoliberal, neoliberal framework, but it also prioritizes the well-being of humans first. And that is why it is part of radical alignment. So thanks for watching. Cheers.